We will begin our meeting this morning with prayer. I'll ask Jeff Waller, if you would, please to come forward. Uh, Gospel Ministries to Children. And I'd ask you please to stand as you're able. There you go, sir. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the rain that you bless us with this morning. Lord, we thank you for the abundance that it brings to our, to our city. Lord, I just pray that you would just uh, meet here with us this morning. Lord, we thank you for the blessings you've given our city, for the good economy, for the prosperity, Lord, that you've given our city. I pray that it would continue. Lord, I just pray that you would just uh, be with this city council as they, as they make decisions today. Lord, that they would be decisions that would be pleasing to you, Lord that you would keep them from wrong decisions. Lord, we pray for our country this morning as this is election day. Lord, I just pray that the leaders of your choice would be chosen in our country. Lord, we thank you so much for the salvation you provided through your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. And to help me with the pledge this morning, I have four first graders. Uh, no, I have a first, a second, a third, and a fourth from Angelo Catholic Schools, Lucas Lopez, if you would come forward, Annalisa Lopez, if you would come forward, Natalie Lopez, if you would come forward, and Emily Bowling. Thank you for being here this morning to help us. Let's line up over here and then we'll say the pledge to the American flag. Y'all ready? Get us started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you so much. Come here, let's get a big Look at that big bear hug. Isn't that cute? The back side was better than the front. And we do have a couple of proclamations. The first one is to stomp out diabetes, Diabetes Awareness Month, to be accepted by the City of San Angelo Employee Wellness Committee. Would y'all please come forward? Are you the whole committee, Morgan? Okay, there's Lisa. <coughs> Good morning. Whereas, nearly 30 million children and adults in the United States have diabetes, and another 86 million who have pre-diabetes are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes and its deadly consequences. And whereas the American Diabetes Association has selected November as Diabetes Awareness Month to encourage Americans to get started living a healthy and active lifestyle. And the City of San Angelo Working on Wellness Committee has selected November as Stomp Out Diabetes, Diabetes Awareness Month, and the City of San Angelo has made a commitment to wellness. Now therefore, I, Dwayne Morrison, the Mayor of the City of San Angelo, on behalf of the City Council to hereby proclaim the month of November 214 as Stomp Out Diabetes, Diabetes Awareness Month, and encourage the community and the support and participation of all citizens in learning more about Diabetes Awareness Program during Stomp Out Diabetes, Diabetes Awareness Month. And I will present, and both of you have the microphone. Thank you to the council today for, uh, for recognizing this. Diabetes is the fastest growing disease in America today, and it is the fastest growing disease amongst all age groups. And so we appreciate uh, the city of San Angelo's um, commitment to stomping out diabetes, and we encourage city employees together with all San Angeloans to uh, seek uh, healthy opportunities and to stomp out diabetes. We do have another proclamation here, and this is a big one. The commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War uh, to be accepted by Dr. Maurice Fortin, the Executive Director of Library Services. Are you the only one that's coming up, or the rest of your group coming up as well? They're going to stand up as I <laughs> Okay, that'll work, sir. Let me read this proclamation. It says, Where I, whereas our nation is observing the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, we pause to reflect on the valor and the sacrifice of over 
three million men and women of every background and branch of service, especially our local veterans who answered our country's call to arms between 1965 and 1975. And for more than a decade, these Americans served honorably, upholding the highest traditions of our armed forces, whether on land, in the air, or at sea. And this brave generation of heroes who suffered wounds, both visible and invisible, in the fight to protect the ideals of this nation have gone largely unrecognized. We, the citizens of the city of San Angelo, stand committed to honor and give thanks to the veterans who answered our country's call to service in the names of over 58,000 men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice or eternally memorialized in the black granite of the Vietnam War Memorial, The Wall, in Washington, D.C., and the 3,417 dog tags that are entombed in the Texas Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Austin, and in the names of the 48 fallen soldiers, sailors, marines, and airmen that remain under the constant guard of the Huey at St. Angelo's Vietnam Veterans Memorial near Mathis Field, we declare that they did not die in vain, nor will they sacrifice ever be forgotten. And whereas students from Angelo State University Honors Program represent a new generation of Americans committed to ensuring that the stories of sacrifice, bravery, and the day-to-day -day experience of our veterans are recorded and handed down through time by conducting oral histories with 38 Vietnam veterans, and we extend a special thank you to those 52 veterans and their families who have entrusted their stories, photographs, and in front to the West Texas Collection of Angelo State University to remain as a monument to all that answered the call of duty. Now, therefore, I, Dwayne Morrison, the mayor of the city of San Angelo, on behalf of the city council, do hereby proclaim November 17, 214, to November 11, 215, as the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War through the city of San Angelo and offer our endearing gratitude to our Vietnam veterans. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are several people here with me this morning that I would like to recognize. Three of those people, uh, two of them serve on our Friends of the Library Board and also um, were veterans of this conflict. And a third person is one of those that we interviewed. I start with Dr. Bob Legrand, Linda Nightstep, and Joe Corneliuson. Also with me is Shannon Sturm from our West Texas collection. And we have three students. And I, I want to emphasize this, that this was a great opportunity on many different levels for us to put this exhibit together and then for the panel discussion that will take place on the evening of November 17th. It was a chance for a new generation to learn firsthand American history. I myself am a baby boomer. I was part of that generation that grew up under the greatest generation, those that fought in World War II. History was a major influence on my life. My father fought in World War II, as most of the, my uh, friends that as I was growing up, all of their fathers had participated in that conflict. It was something that was very personal to me, and I ended up spending getting two degrees in U.S. history because of that. Now another generation of students are learning firsthand what it meant to be in that conflict. And they were able to conduct interviews with, I think it was over 40 of these veterans, as well as others that came forward and presented memorabilia, so that they have a firsthand experience in what it was to participate in this conflict and the influence it had on America for that time period, both at home and abroad. So there are three of the students here today that also, two of them work for me in the West Texas Collection, and all three of them, I believe, are honor students. So Duncan Knox, Lisa Myrice, and Jocelyn Cargill. So please join, join me in thanking them for their participation and work. Thank you very much. Let's get ready. Okay, good. <coughs> 
It is now time for public comment. Let me read the legalities and then I will allow you each to come up and make your statements. The council takes public comment on all items in the regular agenda. Public input on a regular agenda item will be taken at its appropriate discussion. Public input on an item not on the, agen on the agenda or consent agenda may be identified and requested for consideration by the council at this time. The council may request an item to be placed on a future agenda or for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for public comment. On public hearing items, public input will be received on each item immediately following the council discussion and prior to any action on the item. Each member of the public should make their remarks from the podium and begin by stating their name. Remarks by each citizen will be limited to three to five minutes unless waived by a council member for all speaking on that matter. No individual will be allowed to speak more than once on any one subject until every citizen wishing to comment has done so. This is your time, citizens. If you wish to approach the council, if there's something on the agenda that you want to, to focus on, or if you just have a comment, pro or con, we're ready. So step to the front, give me a name, and you got three to five minutes. I think you've been here before, Mr. Carnes. Yes, sir. My name is Dale Carnes, and I stand here once again to comment on the Republic Trash Service emptying dumpsters in residential neighborhoods at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's something I've been battling for many, many years, and it's something that needs to be stopped. I was told that other people have complained they're doing it in the uh, central high area apparently they're not considerate to the residents of the of the people of san angelo and i want to know if there's anything we can permanently do to stop them from doing that they're going to uh, apartment complexes emptying dumpsters behind them and uh, the children's advocacy building over on uh, Coberlin and then down to the uh, the late the girls uh, facility down two blocks further and I've been doing this for many years and what they'll do is they say we'll we'll stop doing it they'll do it for about six months give or take a couple of months and then they'll start slowly inching back into the neighborhood again their excuse every time is, well, we have, must have a new driver that doesn't know the rules. But I don't believe that. I know they, for a fact, I don't know for a fact, but I feel that they just don't care about the, uh, the citizens. They want to get their job done and get out to do other things. We're trying to, my wife and I like to sleep with the doors and windows open on these cool nights but when they're emptying dumpsters one block from my house it kind of irritates irritates me and i get up at five o'clock matter in a wet hen and can't get back to sleep and i was hoping that somehow y'all could do something to keep them from doing that in my neighborhood and other neighborhoods around san angelo thank you mr carnes all right thank you very much Shane Kelton, did you hear that? Daniel Valenzuela, did you hear that? Yes, sir, we will meet with the Republic on that. We'll take care of it, Mr. Carnes. Something, we will take care of it again, Mr. Carnes. Again. Thank, thank you, sir. Do I have any other further public comment? Does anyone from the public want to have anything you want to address us about? This is your opportunity, if so. If not, then I will close the public comment section to the public. And I will ask the council members, is there anything from the council that needs to be said, any statements that need to be said, or are there any items on the consent agenda that, won't, that you won't move to the regular? I'm going to start with you, Elizabeth. I just have a correction on the minutes. Okay. Don? I want to remove item four. Number four. Charlotte? I, I would like to pull the minutes also. It, uh, got several uh, just some are typographical areas but there's one area that concerns uh, maybe the whole council that should be discussed um, and then I want to pull five and six 
Brother Silvis? The only comment I have, Mayor, is I've gotten, well, two phone calls this past week. The trash on on the loop it looks it looks like it's getting worse and worse and uh, just wanted to make it known that these uh, you know, some citizens are, are, are upset about it and others that are hauling trash over to the landfill aren't covering up their you know the trash and textile doesn't seem to be doing anything about it so that's those are the comments that I've uh, was shared with and wanted to just express that for for the folks that have called me thank you John okay. Marty no Rodney no I think we got it covered boss do you have anything sir no, we'll uh, definitely talk to Textile about that. Um, I do want to uh, introduce Brian Kendrick. He is sitting in now as an interim city clerk. Uh, we're very pleased to have him. He's coming to us, of course, with experience, worked under Alicia as well. Uh, so we're very pleased to have him. Is there anyone viewing from home? Uh, Brian Kendrick is sitting in right now as the interim city clerk. Welcome, Brian. Glad to see you there, Brian. All right, let's uh, pull items four items five and item six from the consent agenda item one. And, and, and one and the minutes the minutes and item one yes minutes okay I now will entertain a someone to move that we accept item two three seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen on the consent agenda if someone will can will move to accept these so I will. Move. I do have a motion from I'll Charlotte. I'll I do have a second from John. Is there any further comment on these items on consent? Do I have public comment on these consent items before we vote? Not. I will call for the vote. All in favor of accepting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Let's start then with consideration of October 21, 2014, City Council regular meeting minutes. Uh, Elizabeth, start with you, ma'am. Um, in the minutes concerning the discussion of light and heavy manufacturing. Um, I made no remark about talks of a partnership and in fact said that there was no partnership and our, my company's position and responsibility was simply to move freight as it would for any other customer that was uh, positioned along the rail. I, I will make one comment about this. I'm not really certain why we were having a discussion on light and heavy manufacturing that we had such an extensive discussion about a specific property owner. So I hope we learn in the future that the discussion was should have been limited simply to uh, the requirements or the eligibility for light and heavy manufacturing. I respectfully disagree on that, but that's because we opened this up for discussion so that we could completely vet this entire situation because the citizens were very interested in this. So I think everything we did was correct. But uh, she is correct on the notation. I feel that we should change it. Uh, Charlotte? That's uh, page eight, paragraph five, the last line. And you can review the film, uh, but that is in an inaccurate statement from what I recall. Also on page eight, paragraph eight, the second line said that I had presented uh, photos of the sand plant in Barnhart. That is inaccurate. Those were photos off the Hughes Street property that are presented, so that's incorrect. Page 10, paragraph 13, uh, the last word, uh, it's uh, Brian Horner, H-O-R-N-E-R, -E not Homer, H-O-M-E-R. Uh, page 10, paragraph 17, line one, there's just two words ran together there that need to be separated. And that's all that I have on the minutes that I found that needed correcting. Anyone else? Council? Public? Somebody give me a motion to approve this one. Motion with to the, approve. With the, with the amendments. amendments. With the correct. Motion to approve with the amendments. Have a second. second. Do I have a motion? I do have a second. We'll call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Number four is consideration of awarding RFB WU0714 for the 214 turbo compressor blower units replacement project to Sulzer ABS of Meridian, Connecticut for $184,980 budgeted in FY214-215 and authorizing the city manager as a designate to ex execute contract documents. Mr. Dixon, did you pull this one, Don? Yes, sir. Take it, please. Um, 
number one, I have no idea what in the heck that is, so I'm not going to get in your business. <laughs> Thank the only you. thing that concerned me was we had a unit cost on the low bid of 92 thousand and a unit cost on the on the second bidder of 179 i just wanted to make sure we were comparing apples <coughs> to apples and we were we were quite shocked at the difference in the price also but uh, all of these blowers met spec so we're fine with them okay it, it, i mean wh what in the world happened i mean why why would there be that much is it one made in China and one not or something? Well, it could be. I mean, that's the problem we got now. The two that we have out there put in in 2002 are made in Italy. Okay. And it's nearly impossible to get parts for them. Okay. So, and they're wore out and loud, and we have a noise complaint out there, and we're hopeful that these new blowers will solve that problem. Well, and that was my, my next concern is whether or not in the future you, you think these will last that long and be able to get parts and repairs and those sort of things, even though... We looked into that uh, extensively, and we feel good about it. Okay. Thank you, Rick. I had a Sorry. question on that one as well. Um, it did concern me when I looked at the <coughs> bid sheet, and one bid was <coughs> for 92000 which made a total for two of them, 179160 And then the other bid, there were 184000 each for a total of the 358360 Huge disparity there. Man, I wondered if one of them was not a rebuilt no they're brand new units it's not a rebuild <coughs> and then no my next question was if we order these and, and you said in your explanation and I pre appreciate it to replace because the other two had reached their life expectancy will you go ahead and replace them now or will you put these two on the shelf and wait for these ones that we have installed to fail <laughs> no we'll go ahead and replace them uh, part of the issue too that we're trying to accomplished with this is a noise issue and we'd like to address that as soon as we get these in okay. uh, I'll make the motion to approve it just scares me because of the difference I'll second it's always a problem when your turbo compressor <coughs> blower unit gets loud and noisy isn't it it certainly is yes. we do have a motion to approve this we do have a second do I have further comment from the council I, I have to ask what is that where does it <laughs> sludge it's an important process, the sludge processing facility out at the wastewater reclamation facility, okay. uh, and that's what they're used for. <coughs> Do I have public comment on this item? Call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Put a 7 -0 on that one, Brian. Number five, consideration of selecting Raftalus Financial Consultants Incorporated for WU-11014 Water and Water Reclamation Rate Study, budgeting at FY214-15 and authorizing staff to negotiate a contract with said contractor. Charlotte. Uh, yes, and can I get uh, IT up here? I just lost my computer and that was my, well, I'm going to try to come back on. This is what it's been doing, so I don't know. Let's see if I can remember from my notes. Yes. There's not an amount in here. There's that not a dollar amount at all. <laughs> and I know at the workshop that we talked about a study needed to be done. Are you telling me that we have to pay somebody some unknown amount that we're approving no, to this come and is tell just us where our rates <coughs> are? All that we're asking for is your authorization with this company to negotiate a contract and we would bring that price and the contract total back to you for approval. <coughs> <coughs> that is what it says, isn't it? Yes, sir. It is. I just, there's not a price in there. No, to even we'll have to negotiate that. Correct. Somebody want to move to approve? <coughs> motion to approve. Second. Do have a motion from Ms. Grind's staff, a second from Johnny. Anyone else have a comment on this? Public comment? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay? Nay. Put a 6-1 on that one, please, Brian. Number six is consideration of awarding RFB CFM 0414 for plumbing services providers for repair and maintenance activities for the City of San Angelo facilities to superior services and 3D plumbing and authorizing the City Manager to sign all associated contract documents. Mr. Lewis. My question on it was, are we... Uh guaranteeing a service per month amount in there I, I couldn't tell by looking at the backup document no, right and Brian did quiz me about that because he did say accounts would like to have ex the, how much you expect to spend what I did provide you in the backup was what we have annually spent with them I saw that that's what that's the best we can do is an estimate and what I did I think I did in the comments say that each department that has work to be done has to pay from their funding so 
you know, I think the highest year was 73, almost $74,000, and that goes back four years ago. So generally it's 50 to 70,000. It just depends on the needs. The community development department uses a lot of plumbing services for their <coughs> home fix up projects. The rest is just routine repairs for city facilities. Okay, but my question also. No, there is no guarantee. There's no guarantee no, there's that no they'll get X amount a month whether we use them or no, not. No, that's, absolutely that's what not. I It's only to on clarify. an hourly basis and then equipment charges as they need to. Move to approve. Second. Do have a motion to approve. Uh, Ms. Farmer, I have a second from Marty. Did you have a question, John? No. Okay. Do I have further council questions, comments on this item? <clears throat> Do I have comments from the public? Then I will call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Put a seven on that one, please, sir. And that ought to take care of our consent agenda. Regular agenda. We will go to item F, which is public hearing and comment. It is the first public hearing and consideration of an introducing, an introducing of ordinance amending Chapter 12, Exhibit A, Zoning Ordinance of the Code of Ordinances, City of San Angelo, Z14-32, Max Jacobs, an ordinance amending Chapter 12, Exhibit A of the Code of Ordinances, City of San Angelo, Texas, which said, Exhibit A of Chapter 12 adopts zoning regulations, use districts, and a zoning map in accordance with a comprehensive plan by changing the zoning and classification of the following property to wit. 16 tracks located approximately 945 feet north of the intersection of South Bryan Boulevard and Town and Country Road between South Bryan Boulevard and Ben Ficklin Road, more specifically occupying the Monterey Edition Block 2, Lot 5, Block 3, and the North 89 feet of Lots 5 and 6, an unaddressed parcel of approximately 0 0.08 acres, being part of Lot 7, an unaddressed parcel approximately 0 0.05 acres being part of lot 22, lots 23 and 25. Yeah. Block four, lot four and part five of part of lot five, an unaddressed parcel. Approximately 0 0.02 acres being part of lot eight. The north 134 feet of lots nine, 10 and 11 and 12, part of lot 21 and all of lot 22, lot 23. Block 5, Lot 4, and part of Lot 5 in South San Angelo, a request for approval of a rezoning from single-family residential RS1 to neighborhood commercial CN, providing for severability and providing a penalty. Rebecca Guerra, you are on, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, Council, Rebecca Guerra, Planning Manager. The next case before you is item Z14. It's a request for a rezoning from the single-family residential, that is the RS1 district, to the neighborhood commercial CN district. This subject property is 2.14 acres. It's a series of small tracks. Um, it's located approximately 945 feet north of South Bryant Boulevard and Town and Country Road. It is in District Number Three, Mr. Silva, Councilman Silva's district, and it is in the Rio Vista neighborhood. As I stated previously, the zoning existing zoning is RS1, and they are proposing neighborhood commercial CN. The future land use designation of these sites um, for blocks two, three, and four is neighborhood center and block five is commercial. Therefore, the request appears to be consistent with the future land use map of the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends approval for the following reasons before you and in your staff reports. The future land use, as I said previously, is commercial and neighborhood commercial. Um, the buffer between, it creates a buffer um, between RS1 and the neighboring CGCH zoning, which is much more intense than the uh, zoning designation that the applicant is requesting. Um, it has direct access from South Bryant, which is a major arterial road. And finally, it provides commercial amenities for nearby residential. On October the 20th, the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of rezoning to Neighborhood Commercial. And the action requested today is to approve rezoning case Z1432 from single family residential to Neighborhood Commercial and approve the ordinance on first reading. This concludes pa staff's presentation. We're available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Start with you, John. This is in your, in your district. Rebecca, the only thing I, uh, I, I never uh, saw was the notifications were was anything sent out yes sir notifications okay, were sent out I may have overlooked it and I overlook it again I still didn't see it but it, okay I did poll uh, some of the neighbors out there that would that would this would affect and I, I uh, got nothing but positive feedback anything to uh, upgrade the area that's been you know desolate for so long uh, they welcome so uh, you know they're they're all happy about the super Walmart and they they welcome any type of activity like this that is gonna you know drum up uh, more uh, you know just give them a place to to shop even closer heaven knows what's going out there but there's a good chance that 
uh, there's some ideas of what could go. Long story short, I make a, uh, I move to approve this item as presented. I second it. Do I have a motion to approve as presented? I do have a second. Uh, have a further, Don, did you have a comment, sir? Well, I, a question. Um, why in between Avenue X and Z was lot 24 omitted and lot 5 put in? It, it doesn't seem like it's joined together. It's simply what the property owner was the physical owner of. He can't, he doesn't have the right, right. to rezone a piece of property he's not the owner of. And he didn't receive agent op authorization to do so. So he was rezoning these and he intends to develop them, Indivi not as individual tracks. He has to replat some of them right. in order to meet the minimum lot widths and lot sizes under the zoning ordinance. Right. This is simply what he owned. And by the time the replat comes through, they will meet those minimum requirements. Okay, good. Elizabeth? I have a similar question. If I look at lot five on Avenue Y, it's surrounded by single family residential, as uh, Councilman Vardaman mm -hmm. was asking you about. Was there any discussion with the property owners to the, I believe that would be to the west, six and seven, about engaging in this rezoning? The applicant did not engage in any discussion. Um, you, could you not have done that as a staff person, contacted them to see if they were interested? Ma'am, it's not normally part of our SOP regarding a request. Um, anything located to the west, as you can see on the, if, generally when we look at a, a rezoning application, we look at consistency and compatibility. Staff doesn't go out and seek um, additional rezonings from other property owners. We wait for them to come in. Unless a property owner is coming in to do a rezoning um, and they want to go to a specific zoning district, um, that they can't meet those minimum standards. It's in that case we would go out and we would encourage them to do so, but staff as a whole does not generally go out um, and encourage other property owners to come into a rezoning request. I think that's a missed opportunity because six and now what we're doing is I understand the kind of the continuity of the other lots and, I, and I'm like Johnny I think that a neighborhood commercial in this area would be very helpful to those that live in the immediate area but um, selecting one lot out of uh, five lots there to me is concerning I'm not sure how the property owner could could make any good use of that by itself what? I do see that six and seven I think on the aerial are vacant they are indeed they are I, I think I'm sorry Charlotte I just have a comment, Mr. Valenzuela, that I, I do know that Mr. Silvis and I both have requested <coughs> numerous times to see the comments that were sent out to people to have and also the minutes of the Planning Commission's meeting so that we may read what the discussion was that was had in neither of these items are in the packet again. Okay. I was not aware of that, but I can assure you that from here on forward, uh, we will have that information. And if you need to have that information sent to you, I will be more than happy to send that to you. I don't need it after the fact. But we'll that we've, had, we've had trans transition, no excuse, but uh, absolutely we'll make sure that it's in there in the future. Absolutely, and I apologize for that, for that omission. Let me, Mayor, let me Rod, just let's add. get Rodney and Rodney, go ahead. Elizabeth, I think that, because uh, I've talked to this group on this deal, especially when I was dealing with Walmart, and uh, he's in the process of trying to get those two lots and, and you know he can't ask for the zone to be changed on it until he actually has that so I think that's what the master plan was although you know there's the possibility he won't get those lots and then there will be residential out there well but the good thing is I think you're right that at least they're vacant we know there's not a single family home that could be sort of engulfed in this so I, I think you're right that that's what's going to happen here. and wrong? and slot number seven was you know our plan as the city already was to to have that to be commercial anyway slot number seven for sure is there an option to approve what's been requested excluding five Pardon? no no i, I no, think no, I no not yet but thank no. you john <laughs> no i was just Cross gonna i know that uh there is conversation with some of these lots that are that uh, for example max jacobs is interested in there is conversation with some of the other landowners that own property just north of say like avenue y uh, of swapping out so at least that 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 conversation is happening as yeah. as we as we speak so very well further comment from council 
another question on yes, um, on San Jacinto, lots 9, 10, 11, and 12. Will there have to be a fence built between those lots and uh, the – oh, that's not – that's commercial below it too, isn't it? Yes. Rebecca, okay, so no – Regardless fencing. if it's commercial or it's zoned commercial, if the use is residential, they will have to erect a fence, okay. ma'am. So you are correct. Thank you. Do I have comment from the public on this before we vote? If not, I will call for the vote. Uh, the motion was to accept this as presented. It has been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Put a 6-1 on that one, Mr. Bryan. Let's see. Number 15, report, discussion on, and consideration of approving matters related to the River Fest. Carl White. Tell us your success story, buddy. Yes, sir. The bottom line is that we, when we brought this to council about this time last year, we asked council if you wanted to have this event again for 2014. The council said yes, uh, raise sponsorships and come back to us and report in the summer. Let us know if you've got sponsorships to host the event. So we did that. We, ho we came back to council. We said we had the sponsorships, and then we hosted the event in September. So the bottom line for this for today is to ask you if you would like this event to continue next year and, and maybe following years uh, the goals primarily were to host a, an event a pretty much all day event for the community um, for to have some fun uh, to break even financially if not make a little money have some economic Im impact on the city and to um, and to get an attendance of between eight and ten thousand people last year we, our estimated est attendance was 7200 this time it was about 9200 this year we had a corporate sponsor, Stripes, so the, the event was called Stripes River Fest 2014. We learned some lessons from last year, so we consolidated several of the activities into a core area, which is around the Neffs Amusement Park. We started with concerts Friday night and then had a full day of activities ending with concerts at the River Stage Saturday night. Look at the t-shirt. The, the uh, concert Friday night, we, we had rain. <laughs> Rain does seem to go along exist around Riverfest, <laughs> and, and and today as well. Dampen things. Um, so we had to move the Friday night concert from the River Stage to the Coliseum. It was a little awkward because they kept the pa Los Palominos were talking about Riverfest, and we were at the Coliseum, two three miles away from the river, which was kind of odd. But we had a decent turnout at the concert. A little over six hundred folks came. Of course, we were competing with the football on Friday night. But then Saturday morning we started with a color up 5K from the fort. I'll go through pictures very quickly. Lily Fest started. With, this is the, the second year and then the first year that we combined Lily Fest with River Fest. We had some pirates show up. <laughs> they actually were very fun and engaging. <laughs> they were just street performers and they didn't cost us anything. We had the Girl Scout canoe races. We moved them over to this section of the river between Irving and Celebration Bridge, and that worked out very well. They were very pleased with that move. Of course, this shows the, the uh, I think, before the Girl Scout started racing. I'm not sure why the mayor's not in this picture, but <laughs> the mayor did race. That like, that like killed Charlotte now. <laughs> Charlotte was in there, too. Oh, she was. I don't, I don't the know. The only thing that was not fun... I finished dead last, uh -oh. one place behind the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a blast. Yes, Thank you. The problem was getting out of the canoe once I got in right. and got through. <laughs> got to step out. I love seeing these pictures like this, you know, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. The Alex Vega with the Vega Washer Pitching Tournament, he is always so professional, very organized. We enjoyed having them as a partner with this event. We brought in a car show. We had mascots, Stripes mascots. Uh, they had roaming rights to the event. We had a petting zoo, pointing rides again, inflatables. Local musicians played at the Chabron Street Bridge. We had families enjoying the interactive art, which is cool to see. We had a very successful concession area. We had, this is a street performer, it's Jim Rungi from um, El Dorado. He sprayed himself silver and pretended to be a statue. Uh, and people would look at him, and then he would that was, make he was eye fascinating. contact. <laughs> it was a little different. Kids having fun. And then folks after the Girl Scout races got to uh, try out their skills at canoeing, paddle boating, face painting. The Stripes had a 
tornado booth where you got kids got to grab coupons in the in the booth for free tacos and things like that. And then Saturday night, as it <laughs> as it as it always is, the rain approached and um, it kind of delayed a few of our events at night. Art and Uncommon Places joined us for an interesting event, the Butterfly Door Tours, which is kind of like a scavenger hunt for kids. They got to find these cool little doors that were put on the side of buildings. They did one during the day and they did one at night. You can't tell, but this the, each one glows in the dark so the kids can find them in the dark. I think there were seven of them. And uh, about I love the time that picture. That's the a concert picture. started, we tried something different and we may actually make it into a smaller event as part of the Riverfest was the, the floating lanterns. When we were doing this, we just did it for fun, and we had several people come up to us and ask us what it was about. And We had about 30 people watching us and gave us the idea of maybe trying to ha have an event around this. And then we ended with concert Saturday night. And because of the rain, that night there was a deluge on the southwest side of town, and it threatened the river stage for quite a while. And it really only got, gave us a heavy sprinkle there. But we started having about four to 500 people at the concert. But then once the sprinkles started, folks left, and we ended up with about 70 or 80 people. In terms of challenges, what the weather again was a challenge. Uh, we had two, the two concerts. We had two different promoters, and both promoters wanted to uh, cancel the concerts uh, because they were in it to make the money. So we stepped in and saved those two concerts, working with uh, San Angelo Host to promote those events. Uh, the color run, I think we've kind of saturated the market. We collectively s saturated the market with color runs. There's probably too many out there now. Uh, so we had less numbers than the first year at, at our color run. Um, raising the funds, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't real hard, especially when Stripes stepped forward with the c corporate sponsorship of $10,000. It took us some time to get all the sponsorships. And of course, competing events. Major pluses, most of the activities were free and affordable. Uh, we received several compliments on this. The kids' court area, uh, folks would pay $5, and the kids could do all the inflatables, all the kid activities, and we got several compliments on that. And actually, that piece uh, generated f almost five times as much revenue as we expected. So it was very successful. Got lots of good feedback. We had a decent level of uh, sponsorships, or actually good level of sponsorships. We satisfied our, our title sponsor. They came up to the end, uh, came up to us at the end of the day and said how much they enjoyed the event, how much they enjoyed the people. The people were very friendly, very engaging, and they wanted to talk with us about next year. So, and they said actually the the T-shirt was the best T-shirt design they had ever seen, and they host lots of events. The um, the washer pitching tournament raised seventeen hundred dollars for the wounded warrior project and the best news is we ended in the black with about seven thousand dollars not not in the red in the black attendance about ninety two hundred folks most popular activities were the kids court the color up 5k the concerts the washer pitching tournament and the girl scout canoe races we had we did meet after the event and talked about lessons learned uh, with the Lily Fest, if we have it again with River Fest, we'll end it earlier. It, it probably went on too long. We need to add a separate area for teens, for teen activities, maybe have a sand volleyball court area for, and a tournament. Um, keep everything affordable. <coughs> and the, the wristbands, the comprehensive use of the wristbands has worked very well. Uh, we need to have a different theme twist for the run. Uh, we need to consider adding new events like a water slide on Irving Street is one idea that we have. Uh, which would have a cost, of course. Uh, do something with the lantern glow on the river. Consider not having a Friday night concert and just having concerts all throughout the day at the River Fest, and then end with the big concerts Saturday night. Modified the food and drink area. It got a little too crowded. We need to uh, improve the layout of it. Perhaps bid out the food and drink concessions. Uh, open the Love Municipal Pool to the public. Add more street performers. And I think that's it. So the bottom line is, do you want this event to happen for next year? Well, I'll start first, and I will say yes, definitely. This needs to be a perpetual annual celebration. I'll open it up to the council. Any comments, Charlotte? Absolutely want to have it. Besides that, you have a kitty to start next year. I'd like to make sure that that $7,000 is tagged for Riverfest and Riverfest only Ex expenses for next year. Maybe we can let it grow a little bit. Uh, I commend you, Anthony, Brian. You're the only city employees that I saw 
I know there were more out there but than the only ones, and you guys worked your tails off. Uh, it was uh, a act of love. You could tell you were enjoying what you were doing. The people, I made it a point to walk both sides of the river and talk to as many people. I'd just walk up and ask them how they were enjoying it. They loved it. Everyone loved it. That's the reason I told you I didn't care if we went in the red, that the community camaraderie that was going on was, was awesome. It truly was. I did get a couple of suggestions for activities. If you could have more activities for adults, especially the seniors. Uh, you've got a concrete slab up there. They said even if uh, you just had a little local group, you know, band during the day, they you would, wouldn't mind sitting around or sitting on bales of hay and listening or maybe doing a little old-fashioned two-step up in one area. And also bingo, if you could offer bingo and uh, of course people be willing to pay for a little paper card and, and you know have gifts or whatnot not suggesting play for money just gifts and the other suggestion was for children ages one to four and then have a separate area for children five to ten and have a money dig and what that amounts to is you can get a sponsor but all it's just big boxes of sand and you put it coins from pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and half dollars in the money dig and let the kids dig for money. They'll dig all day long if you tell them there's money in there. And it, it's worked at other picnics and stuff, but it keeps the smaller children active and excited they're digging for money. And it was just more games for adults, more activities. Otherwise, everyone loved it. Thank you. Further comment? I remember Carl begging for support for this, so I just want to again congratulate you and, and the team that helped you for pressing forward when, um, when there wasn't a lot of support. As Charlotte said, I think the whole community loved it, so again, congratulations. It'll only get better. Thank you. Don? I think it's a great thing. Um, both years you've had rain have you thought about maybe moving it a month one way or the other you know maybe Post august it every month yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe august instead of september or something like that but we love the rain so if you want to keep it there that's fine too that's what it takes <laughs> comments from the left wing john yeah carl I by looking at a lot of these pictures uh, i know that this this community is hungry for stuff like this so I uh, kudos to everyone I say move move on with it and uh, the only two things that I had a question about was why do you think the the color run dropped in, in attendance and uh, and then also how did the I didn't get to play this year how did the golf tournament go how do you know the attendance they there? Let's see they say they had 30 teams oh it's on here it was actually better than last year than mm. 60 participants, so that was 20 teams. Okay. It was actually better than last year. Not and a lot, but some. And the color run dropped? In it number? dropped. It was almost half. And I think it's just there's a saturation of color runs in the market. Oh. The Girl Scouts hosted one a few months before us, and I think they only had 150 people. Because <coughs> you had, what, 2,000 last year? And we had 20, 21, 36, and then we dropped and about 1,100. what 1, was the entry fee on the color run? It, it varied. It started out... Um, lower than it went higher i think the day of it was fifty dollars so it's not cheap but it starts out like at 30 or 35 a, mo a few months before pretty steep good job rodney and Marty? the rain i think the rain had some effect too go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. no just good job I'm, I'm glad it's in the black and when it's in the black uh, people forget a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> good job thank you that's, the, that's the, exactly what I would say. As long as we're making money, I think everybody's happy. As soon as we don't make money, then we'll have a problem. Understood. Do we need or to – Or break uh, even. Not even not make yeah, money. I just break even. I don't care if we make money. I hear there's consensus, but – We've got an approval by consensus. If you want approval by vote, I'll call for a vote. Yeah. You I want to call for a vote? Let me add something. Yeah. I know that the, the Southside Lions Club bring out that little carnival. Have you thought about a – Yes. Hey. Yes, sir. Actually, that, that is one of the things we thought about. We're going to yeah. reapproach to see a if we can get a carnival. Of traffic. We we're not sure if we want to bank on the carnival show because we got burned the first time. So mm -hmm. if we do get the carnival, we'd probably put it up at the Paseo, okay. or maybe try to fit it in at Neffs if we can. Right. It would be a smaller carnival like uh, the one that was at Cinco de Mayo. Right. The year before last, they pulled out on us. I remember that. Yeah. So it was kind of tough. 
I did use have two requests for more don't food locations down the river that you know people walked or they just wanted to eat. They didn't bring a picnic basket. Motion to approve. That's Second. what I was waiting for. Let's make this Second. official. Do you have a motion to approve that we continue this? It is a good deal. You did a good job. I'm proud of Blizzard. Proud of the way it turned out. I do have a motion to approve. I do have a second. We've had council discussion. Is there any any more? Yes, ma'am. Does that motion include uh, banking the seven thousand dollar kitty designated it for Riverfest? It's only? It, it is currently in a designated revenue and expenditure yeah. account. It just needs to roll over. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. As they roll it over. I don't have is to it? add it. Just yes. Okay. Public comment on this. I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Put a 7-0 on that, please, sir. I believe the rollovers are coming to council at the next next meeting. All right. We are now to – must be missing some pages out of this because I see – <laughs> <That's it, Mayor. laughs> Don't you it. say anything. I'm seeing us in our very last section. Item G is follow-up administrative issues. Number 16, consideration of and possible action on matters discussed in executive closed session if needed. And we have not had our executive yet, so this one will be postponed until after executive. Number 17 is Charter Review Committee, uh, single member district one, Rodney Fleming has appointed Trinidad a Gary. Motion to approve? So moved. Second. Do have a motion to approve Trinidad. I do have a second. Comments from council? Public comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Put a 7-0 on that one, please, sir. Uh, let's go ahead and take care of 18. Announcements, consideration of future agenda items. Start with you, Elizabeth. Um, maybe a, I guess one comment I have. Uh, Ricky Dixon spoke at my neighborhood chat on, I believe it was October 21st, and um, it was a very good conversation, and I really appre appreciate his attendance. One thing that came out of that, I think, is a lack of understanding in the at least my neighborhood and probably throughout the community of what uh, our use of gray water can be at our homes and businesses. Okay. So maybe Thank between you. now and Christmas, if we could set up a uh, presentation of that type one evening, I think it would be very well attended. I know there's more opportunities than I personally know about. So before we go into spring and summer, I think that would be a point of information that everybody would appreciate. Very good idea. And that guy that's doing that is from Ballinger that's been coming over here like he's the expert. So. Okay. Didn't Anything know that. further, ma'am? No, thank you. No. Don. Um, my 19th Street uh, uh, sidewalk project, I know we had an update uh, not too awful long ago on that, and, and my suggestion was rather than keeping on uh, trying to uh, uh, get these people to understand the need to, to go through eminent domain, I'd just like an update on that to see where we stand with, with those parties that are left. Charlotte? Yes, on uh, my request last time about the MLK Park, I wanted to make sure that's in the future discussions on um, CIP. the CIP, and I wanted to clarify that, that that's where it's at and that's where it will be discussed. And we maybe need to be looking at the priorities in our CIP, having a checkoff list as to how those move up because they just get talked about forever. And, and we do have a meeting coming up to especially um, – uh, attend to that as far as CIP and the priorities on that. And the other item that I would like to see on the agenda is possibly a workshop. Uh, there's Shane. Uh, with reference to the trash that Mr. Silvas pointed out in the loop area, the shopping area, which is has been an ongoing problem for the last six, seven, eight years. You know, we've got a lot of wind out in that area, and it, it's not just the cleanup of it, it's preventing it from happening. And if we have lockdown dumpsters or some sort of program, I'd like to see a workshop committee to discuss that problem so it would help keep the area cleaner than it is. Okay. That's it for now. John? I just wanted to plant the seed. I know that uh, a number of months ago, Ethicon had a family fun day event for their 50th uh, anniversary celebration and they had softball tournaments out there at the Texas Sports Complex. I would like the city uh, to have a family fun sort of day and get all the departments, all the employees out there somewhere. Just to, you know, just, just, just the morale of the city as a whole. I think it's, it's something that's, uh, that's needed. I'm not saying that everybody's down, but I'm saying 
it's, it, it'd be a fun event for the city to have. And I'd like to at least plant the seed with Anthony Wilson or Carl White or somebody, Marianne, to kind of kick around the idea of having a, a barbecue, softball, something out there and, and you know, just, just have some fun along the way. Thanks. Marty. Uh, we're working on zoning classifications. Okay. Thank you. Rodney. Okay, a couple items. One, I've asked for this a couple of times already, the follow-up on the boat dock, the police boat dock. I don't understand why this is taking so long. I'd like for a presentation to be done and let us know exactly where we are and what hurdles we need to overcome to get this thing done. The next thing, the water collection system. We had this and we approved or we, we sent it to the committee to be reviewed and it's been nine months and that's that's crazy we've we need to get that back and we need to figure out what hurdles we need to get on that one if we are having problems with it or not the last thing i'd like to talk to you i'd like ricky to give us a presentation on the fluoride that we're putting into the water system and see pros and cons of whether we can do away with that or not Mayor, while he's walking up, can I piggyback on uh, the boat ramp? I know I had a gentleman comment to me last week that uh, why we were spending over a million dollars for boat ramps, and that's nowhere close no. to the dollar amount. So, uh, yeah. And this is a boat dock, though. I'm talking about the okay. police boat dock. Okay, and I'm talking about a boat ramp then okay. that uh, I would definitely want a, some type of a presentation on that also. So. And we'll give you an update on that boat dock. I know the one thing they were working on was the architect getting the plans back to us. And David talked to me about that yesterday. And it sounds like he's the architect, not the city architect, the one they contracted with is close. Okay. Uh, we do not add fluoride to the water. It's so naturally occurring in, the, in our ivy supply and in Twin Buttes both. The regulatory limit is 4 milligrams per liter right now, I think. And we're at like 0.3 to 0.7. It's naturally occurring. We okay. don't add any. So nothing was added? Nothing. Okay. I was misinformed on that. Charlotte? Yes, and I wanted to add if the council could have possibly a walkthrough or an update. We can't go to the site physically, all of us, and have videos to where the water plant, where it's at, uh, what the progress has been, what we expect, is it on time, and uh, are we going to have a big ribbon cutting? I would like to talk about that. Uh, publicly and then I want an update on the cemetery where we're at with oh, reference yeah. to the um, Colum um, Col Col yeah the whole area we're, we're close to construction on that one as far as the architect plan the, the engineering stuff just came back so that should go out David said to, to the formal bids very shortly okay anything else I'm going to take us into executive's closed session at this time. It is 10 o'clock. Number E, executive closed session. Executive session under the revision of government code, Title V, Open Government Ethics, Subtitle A, Open Government Chapter 551, Open Meeting, Subchapter D. Exceptions to requirement that meetings be open under the following section, Section 551072. Deliberate the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property pertaining to Lake Nasworthy. Possible police station location, property owned by the city. Section 5510712. To consult with its attorney on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the government body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter regarding legal requirements for funding tax incentive programs. And Section 5510074A1. To deliberate the evaluation and duties of the city manager, Daniel Valenzuela. <clears throat> I suspect we're going to be in there about an hour and a half to two hours. Do you agree, Daniel? Probably so. Everybody agree? Let's shoot for noon to be back to close and wrap this up. We are now an executive. Yes. It is 2.07, and we will call the meeting back to order. Let me get this down to the... All right, on consideration of possible actions on matters discussed in the executive closed session, uh, we spoke about public property. This is specifically a police station. Uh, we would, I, would, I would ask for someone to move that we allow the city manager to negotiate the purchase of property for public use 
specifically the police station. There is no dollar amount to this. This is just something that we are negotiating. Motion to approve. Second. second. I do have a motion to approve from Elizabeth. I'll make Johnny second. Do we have any comment from the council at this time? Public comment. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay. Put a 7 on that one. We also have uh, evaluated the city manager. We are in the process of that evaluation, and at this time, there is nothing to report. And I guess that pretty well covers the agenda. Is there any other comments from council? Second. Have a motion to adjourn. We do have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. 209.